Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning in once again to my guitar blog. It is Saturday, July 9th, 2011. And uh, this week I had a question sent to me from Cooper out in Denver, Colorado. He wrote in saying, I've recently purchased a 1985 GNL broadcaster and I can't get the action to feel good no matter what I do. Can you explain what determines the fretboard action besides from the string gauge and the string height? Well, those are the obvious ones, Cooper. Thanks for writing in, but uh, unfortunately, this is a pretty tough question to easily answer because there's basically so many reasons behind the feel of string action. Now, I can certainly say to you that the scale length and headstock angle will be two of the major reasons for a difference in the feel of string action, with uh, probably the greater there definitely being the scale length. So if you've got a 24 fret neck, the likelihood is that uh, that combined you know, with the, uh, the, the angle of the headstock is going to definitely make a difference in the stiffness of the feel of the strings. So basically, the longer the scale length, the higher the string tension will be. Now, of course, there's the other factor of headstock angle because uh, that second factor there does have a, uh, a, an issue that it plays. Uh, there's a greater degree to the uh, string tension with the greater degree of the angle that's created. And um, we're gonna also talk uh, in a few minutes also about string tees, uh, you know, those retainers. If you have a guitar like a GNL or you have a Fender Stratocaster like the one I'm holding here. So besides that though, we should also go to the other end and think about the um, degree of angle that the string breaks over the saddle because um, this can play a serious role in a combination with the scale length, of course, and uh, headstock angle. But um, the, the saddle height plays a role in that too. And it also has to do with how the strings attach to the instrument. You know, if the guitar has a very strange design that places very hard angles relative to the axis of the neck, uh, you'll experience tighter action for sure. And there's not too much you can really do about that unless you completely change the design of the guitar. Now, other reasons here uh, also can include the uh, string retainers on the headstock, and that's going to be something very popular on a straight headstock like you'd have here with the um, Fender Stratocaster or, again, on the GNL style. So uh, let's kind of add to that some other reasons, though, uh, aside from the string retainer height. Um, there's neck radius and also even the fret wire height. So let's go through an example here. Let's say you had a low retainer height on the headstock with strong neck radius. That means it's very curved. And then, of course, uh, low frets, which will basically all come together there to promote some pretty stiff action. And there's not too much that you're really going to be able to do with that. Now, going, going and moving on, there's one more guitar related issue that I think we need to discuss. And, you know, I don't have mine on my Strat here, but it's the tremolo bar design and also the tension setting of the springs and how the tension setting is overall of the tremolo bar. That will play uh, definitely a, uh, an issue with your uh, bendability anyway of the strings. It's going to, to definitely play a role uh, if it's a tight and stiff uh, tremolo bar, well, you're gonna probably have stiffer action on your guitar. And again, there's not too much you can really do about that, of course, unless you ripped out the tremolo bar and completely replaced that whole side of your instrument. So uh, one other factor though, before we move on to my final issue, uh, will be that of string type. So if you're using Martin strings, Gibson strings, D'Addario, or you know, Fender strings, or just the, uh, the house brand of your local favorite mu uh, music store, whether that's Guitar uh, Center if you're in uh, the United States, or if that's Long & McQuaid if you're in Canada, um, basically, you know, all string types are going to be a little bit different. So essentially, uh, that plays a role and something you got to experiment with and find your favorite types of strings and stick with them if they feel real good to you. Now, here is the final factor, the real clincher in all of this stuff here, and it has to do with one's uh, own personal uh, outlook or perspective of their guitar and what the feel of their guitar is. So in other words, it's uh, just going to be leaning in the complete direction of the guitar's owner. So you have to keep in mind that string action is largely uh, idiosyncratic. It's a very personal thing. It's, uh, it's a situation where from guitar player to guitar player, you could take 
the same guitar and put it in the hands of uh, you know one guy and, and you might say okay this feels great you know this guitar is awesome man I love it and then hand the exact same guitar over to another player and they might go oh man this guitar feels terrible these the string uh, action is is awful etc 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 that's why it's really important if you're taking your guitar into a guitar repair uh, tech to make sure that you describe how you like your action and uh, otherwise the guitar repair person is going to basically set that guitar up the way they like it because they have you know, no instructions from you the player and the owner as to how you like your guitar set up so uh, essentially, there's a lot of factors there, of course, as you can tell, and uh, hopefully this helps uh, out Cooper a little bit as well as several other people. And uh, that's about all the time I have for today. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for watching and for sending in all the great questions. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a great weekend and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.